Bonjour, hi, welcome to the stream, welcome to the cloud, my playground. I'm Frank Boucher, I'm a cloud advocate, and today we're fighting. Today is, today will be an unpleasant day for me. No, seriously, there's something wrong. Last stream, we were working on the tiny blazer URL. It was working, we did a simple demo, just connecting using Azure Active Directory and everything was working fine. We brought the code to um, the tiny blazer uh, URL. So let me share my screen right away. Boom, like this. So just to give it a little bit context if it's the first time you're watching. So we built on this stream a URL shortener. So very friendly one click deploy you have your URL shortener but to create the URL and manage the URL right now it's a website and a website requests a lot of resources like a back-end front-end and stuff like that it's working it's perfect but we were work we, we were looking for a very friendly budget friendly solution so I thought what if we could run only on client side and since I a C Sharp developer, I thought, you know what, Blazor just came out, let's have a try. So we start a new project called Tiny Blazor Admin, and in this project, we're using Blazor but as a WebAssembly. WebAssembly is only on client side, but it's in C Sharp. So it's very new, uh, so expect trouble at the beginning but uh, we're learning and it's fun right so we did that so I want to call so the back end of the URL Bonjour. hi hey Stefan how are you so this is in two parts there's the back end and it's using serverless so what I did just before the stream I publish the server Front end less, so I only have the Azure function. Use, let's say it's an API, so I have serverless API. And now I want to use that, but I want to connect securely because I don't want everyone to be able to call the Azure function. So we plan to use Azure Active Directory since the solution is built to run in Azure and you have an Azure Active Directory free with all your subscription I thought you know let's leverage that and, and use it so that's the plan last stream we merged all the code to get to make the authentication based on a blog post here from our friends Jeremy Lickness this guy and everything was working so I thought okay we're ready let's bring it back but uh, bring that thing back seems to broke something and it's not working so oh there it is okay the music is very loud let's fix that and it's a boring music by the way better that way yes okay can you still hear the music if I'm not speaking yeah it's perfect we cannot hear the music I think you can. Where is my voice into that? Okay, it's here. Ah. Yes. Oh yeah, that was the process. Anyway, so I deployed just before the stream a new uh, function. So tiny admin and then hmxyp. 
So that's the new Azure function we'll be working on. And now I, uh, let's create a new app registration and just, you know what? Let's create a new app registration, create a nothing blazer app, just like scaffolding a new app and see if that works. Maybe it's my, uh, maybe it's the version of blazer I'm running. Maybe it's my AD that is broken. I want, I want to understand because right now there's no reason. It was working and it stopped working. So I'm suspecting something bad in my AD, but I don't know. Hey, NART002. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the battle. <laughs> okay, so ready? Let's jump. Full screen mode. So yeah, so uh, the plan of today is I have only one goal. Where is it? It's here. Oh, another thing I forgot. I had a, an update, Windows update. I didn't check if it was the update. I'm waiting for um, and I'm zoom it voila Boom. so we have one goal today connect secure come on oh yeah missing e I have one doubt in JS. Today it's not JavaScript. Today it's in C sharp. But um, I want to use it also in JavaScript, but not for today. But uh, yeah, yeah. So if I make that works and everything, I'm planning to have something also in JavaScript to do the same kind of thing. But uh, yeah. Okay, so first we need an app registration. So let's go in Azure. Boom, I'm in Azure. Little boy, turning on. So we'll go in Azure Active Directory. Boom, and now we want to create an app registration. An app registration is just a way so our app will know those IDs and instead of creating a fake user, you create an app registration and then you use that and your app will be able to register in your Active Directory. So we want to go in app registration and we want to create a new app registration. So we'll create a new thing and we'll create a tiny uh, demo, tiny admin demo. Uses account organization. That's good. That's what I want. Here we'll return the authentication. I feel like this is what I want. Uh, I think we just need to. I always forgot the URL you need to put. So, register, blah, 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 blah. Yep. Enable this application. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, there it is. So, Azure Active Directory, app registration, provide a name, blah, blah, blah. Choose supported account type, select account this organization return only. That's what I used, right? Yep. Uh, leave the redirect URL drop down set to web. Excellent. And now we need to do this. Ah, that's what I want to do. I knew, knew it. Voila. So here, and then the port by default is 500 ding. Voila. Right, let's double check. It is just an easy question, but I 
stuck on it if you don't mind. Small suggestion. Would you? Yeah, yeah. Go. It's a friendly zone here. No worry. Ask your question, R002. Um, the default part is running as blah blah blah. Nah, 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 nah. Disable permission. Grant admin consent. What? I don't have that. a token directly from authorization endpoint checking access token ID and token is recommend if the application is a single sign-on aggregation yeah has no backend component does not use the latest version of blah 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 Guys, it's nice when you have screenshots. I don't have that. Click register. And for us, it was save. <laughs> Implicit grant, select the checkbox access and remaining default app. So I must have those things checked. Whoops, I miss. Okay, I have, uh, I have generated a random five digit using matrandom method. And I want to check user and a number with a randomly generated number. Ooh. Mm. Okay, let me reread again. So I've generated a five digit number, so let's say let's say Two, three, four, five. 
using a method yeah okay so method store that value in a variable and I want to check okay so if I enter zero 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 five it should be one right should you do that with a uh, regex uh, and as an answer would mm. yeah that's what I was thinking well you know like if for each number I think I would do also a, a loop and check uh, it depends like if you're playing what's the super mastermind or something like that um, I would do uh, contains for each number so you will do for whatever the user enter a split and then loop through the result and checking if the initial value contains like the current character and also in the future if you would like to say okay like you know you had the so that's one thing and if you're trying to make a super mastermind game then I will lower the volume because here it's it's loud doing a loop well if you split that one and you split that one then you will be also able to say oh like you have two digit that are match and at the good position so something like that the position is important now well yeah so split and split and compare um, doing it with a rig X because rig X is powerful but it's sometimes hard to uh, Yeah, the problem, regex sometime, like it's super powerful, but at the same time, uh, yeah, it could be hard to debug if something, so uh, I'm assuming it's possible, but I will do loops instead. That That's my two cents. Easy to understand, like it's not that big, it's only five. I don't know like, if it was like a millions of loopings and everything, but just five pff, do loop. It will be easier to uh, easier to maintain and everything. That's my my opinion, my humble opinion. I could be wrong. Okay, so we did create split number, loop through it and check if the content. Yeah, so you sp when someone enter something, that will be considered considered as a string. So split that one, split that one, and check. So if zero is matching one, if zero is matching two, if zero is matching blah 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 blah, and then you could register good, good, false, 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 good. So we have our app, we saved it. Okay, what's the next step? And now we need to create an app. Excellent. I have no problem with that. So let's do this in the uh, blah blah blah. So now we need the client ID. My client ID was here. Boom. 
So client ID go here and the app name of fine, we'll, we'll give it an app name and now the tenant ID go here and the app name, let's call it to delete and I will go in my browser, make sure I don't have something that is already called to delete because yep, see, it's something I use often. Yeah, no problem. That's why we're, we're here, right? Helping each other. Okay, so now I have my .NET New Blazor WebAssembly authentication service. Blah, 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 blah. Word is hard, my friends. Okay. So, single org because we want to use Azure Active Directory and then I pass my application ID and my tenant ID. So the tenant ID is my tenant. So it's my Azure Active Directory, my AAD, and then client ID is like which one I'm trying to, to get to. So let's create this new .NET. We'll go here, and we'll go in the, um, and temp right boom paste that we'll create a thing excellent now cd to to delete voila and we'll open that in vs code okay so there we are and now if i go in ww root app setting i should have my stuff here so now if I'm trying to, okay, required asset, yes. Version two. Okay, so now it should work. I did that many times. So let's F5 this. of all authorization fail let's try to do the login I will just enter my stuff in another screen ah there it is so now I have this it's good it's good so I have my tiny admin demo, consent on behalf for your organization, I accept. Sorry, but we're having trouble signing you in. That's interesting. The URL specify in the request doesn't match the reply URL in the application FC blah blah blah. So FC blah blah blah, that's my application. If I go in authentication, login callback. Should I put this one?
feel like... was the goal of today right understanding why it's not working but I did that many times and everything was working fine <sighs> for implicit grin select the checkbox for uh, and, uh. local os port authentication that's what we wrote There's a dot there. Was it the dot? Was it the dot? Should I put back again the... do that can I just use this settings here let's do this here and just swiftly is it a word <laughs> quickly like a swift <laughs> so let's open the tiny blazer admin project and let's change this object here I have the feeling that it, it wasn't just this, but because why should I have done that, right? Ooh. Okay, so now we're pointing to the FCF. So that's your new app. So let's close this guy. Uh, so, no, yes save and now let's just run the tiny blazer so f5 please stop asking me so now if i log in there was an error okay but so we know the first app is good So now, oh, what should I do? So now I think what we should do is what's the app logout? Oh, I closed it. Okay, so now we we were able to log in, right? So. Let's keep track of that. So I know it was not part of the goal, but it's an important step, I think. I 
All right, so the new a new Blazor app is login. Now it would be cool if the tiny admin Blazor app could log in. So let's stop this one. So it is already stopped. Stop this one, it's already stopped, right? Yes. And let's see in project here what I have. It's a little bit big. I want to compare the two. Okay, so the Microsoft ISP app core, that's this one, 3.2.0, yes, then something build 2.0 also, then dev server 3.0 also, then MSL, blah, blah, I have 3.0 also, excellent, and then I have the system net HTTP JSON, I have Oh, here I have one. Could it be that? Don't think so, but Interesting. Oh, I think one feature was not supported. Okay. So, just in case it was that, that that could be. <laughs> I can just. I just want to do the minimum here, right? Let's rerun Tiny Blazer. Login. Okay, there's an error. Debug. I wish I had a little bit more uh, authorization fail. Oh, I have stuff, okay. Alt D. Here, but you're right. It's 
been a while since I played with Fiddler, but uh, you know what? Let's let's give it a try. Instead of, uh, I just suspect here that the app is trying to um, because we have multiple. Like the the code here is doing a little bit more, so I'm, I'm just suspecting that it's already kind of trying to see if it can access to the function. And right now, I didn't give access to the function, so maybe that's the problem. So I'm wondering, maybe we should finish that configuration in Azure and then validate instead of, you know, going through like some investigation where the config is not done yet. Because in our code here, the code is doing a lot more. See now, like it, it's token endpoint, there's this, but this is not the good, uh, is it? That's her new, right? I said that was her new. Uh, yeah. So that's her new function. So right away we need to change this. finish the config and after that uh, BQHR I think you're right we should investigate and uh, I may need your help at that time because it's been a little while since I played with Fiddler but uh, I remember it was uh, very useful my team is chatting heavily <laughs> it's just my phone is just buzzing you will drain my battery okay so this thing is working. We'll close it for now. So that was working. So now what we need to do is create an app registration for for our Azure function to make sure that this one also exists. So we did that thing. We did that thing, now it's working. So this is working. And it's providing us a token. And maybe that's what we should be able to... Um... Yes, I did create an app registration. For, so here, that's my app registration in my Azure Active Directory. If I go app registration, this is this is possible. But we should be able to connect to that. That's why I'm kind of maybe we should fiddler fiddler thing. So that's the one, right? I don't remember it was that thing. Maybe it's a little bit more branded now. It's a free tool? Yeah. Oh no, I don't want, don't want trash though. Just download <sighs> your email. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suspect it's just we have a lot of code here where like it's trying to do multiple things so like you know when you have something it's try to do things and maybe get the Azure function endpoint and like those things were not done and that's why because we need another app registration for the Azure function and then give so now we are logged in as the app and now we need to create another app registration and to expose the API and then endpoint and stuff like that and then give our Azure our Blazor app access to the Azure function. Now we're just authenticated in, inside um, Azure. 
So I think that part we still need to do. That could be it. But let's see what the error message is. Oh, Telerik owns. Like, see, it's been a while. Huh? I don't know how long Telerik has been the owner of that thing. Only oh, it was always the case, but less in your face, maybe. So I think what we will need to do is, uh, like it's all explained in uh, Jeremy Lickness, but we'll need to go here, set this thing on, and like configure stuff. Let's see if I have... It's a Tilleric account or a Fiddler account. Successfully go up to the app now. Okay, cool. Wow. There's a lot of stuff that is happening right now. Oh, yeah, I am streaming. <laughs> it's like that's a lot of things. I'm exposing some IPs. Hmm. Let's put that in another window for now. Though it's all local IP, so I don't think it's a problem. I think it's not a problem. this guy and see what's happening in Fiddler. Will it track it? Now if I do login. Doesn't look like he catch anything. Um, would do that as well. Azure function as a key. Yeah, the problem is if I'm trying to, like, if to connect to an Azure Key Vault, I, I need to get authenticated, and like it's the same thing to access to the key vault to get a token and then call the function and I I can't call the function we did it in the past I did a little app and everything was working so uh, I think it was easier and I don't need uh, the uh, key vault I just authenticated and it was working also if you run a blazer app in Azure But here, don't forget that it's a Blazor, but it's a WebAssembly, so it's on client side only, not server side. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I did. That's why I'm running with an app registration and I'm getting a token because it's on client side. But um, <coughs> why? How can I stop it? <coughs> Dropbox. So 
so I could filter just the URL here, right? Wow, that's a lot of... Uh... Look in Microsoft Online. Interesting. And then here. So it's trying to connect to the login Microsoft for port nah, 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 nah. Should I, should I? No, I will be calling the Azure function from Blazor, the WebAssembly. It's kind of like JavaScript. It's on client side, but it's at C sharp, BQHR. post from uh, Jeremy Lickness and we did the full app and it was working so now I just I just don't understand why it's not working anymore but we'll fix it I'm sure well there's something that we forgot so now what we want to do is secure the Azure function with AD right so like I said we need to go in authentication uh, so yeah so we need to do the express setup so this is what he's doing here so let's go do that so in my Azure function here it's tiny blazer admin v0 I need to go in authentication authorization I'll put that on and I will go in Azure Active Directory I could be using multiple others I will do that one and I'll go express uh, create a new app that's cool and let's call it tiny admin funk that's her active directory name and grand common access service Is it off or on? I think it's off. Uh -huh. Grand common access. 
access service permission. Let's close this guy. Um, Now, if I save it, it's really strange because now it's save and it show off. But if I go here and then come back, I will see that now it's configure using an, an, app, an existing app. And this is the app. Now, if I go in this app, can I go there? No. Okay. So let's, this tab here will stay in the Azure function. So this is the tab for Azure function. This is for the tiny admin demo. That will be our tab for the uh, application for the Blazor side. And now here, I will go again in Active Directory and app registration. And if I go all application, now we have Oh, I was, I mean, fun, funk, not fun. That's cool. So we have it here. Hey, YYC. That's cool. I like that. You uh, edit with your, your points, your cloud points. That's cool. I love it. Super nice. Okay. So now let's continue. So. Uh, so now, what we need to do, there's additional configuration to perform. So now we need to go in the Azure Active Directory, but not for our Blazor. So the, the app we just created, so that's exactly where we are. The tiny admin fun, I meant funk, but it's now too late. <laughs> or can I, can I change name? Let's not try too much complicated stuff. Okay, uh, let's go here. So open authentication and make sure the implicit grant for access token is set. Let's validate that. I'm assuming that yes. So it was, it was, wow, Frank, you just read it. Uh, open authentication, authentication and ID token is set, right? Yes. Implicit grant for ID token is set. Yes, this is done. Next, we need to expose an API consumption by other application. Open the expose API tab. So expose API tab. And now we have here, it's not very visible here, but Well, here it's user in persona. Okay. Because it, he's asking that. So we need to expose an API, open expose uh, the API tab. There's two steps. First, if it doesn't exist, you need to add a scope for user and personal with essential is the essence permission that apply the API add a scope, blah, blah, blah. If you allow access, choose admin and user. So we already have that here, admin and user. So this scope for us already exists. So if you choose allow, uh, before the function app can use any credential, user must explicitly opt in by providing consent. Some organization or some administrator, you can revoke the consent at any time. Blah, 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 blah. So like here, so we have all that already. Let, let's make sure it's enabled, it's enabled. So we're good for this part. 
So now I think we need to add an app. Let's continue. So, uh, okay, the scope is just a permission. And now we need the, the client is blah, blah. To allow it to work, we need to authorize it. At the bottom, the same page, authorize client app. Tap add client application and paste the client ID that was generated for the Blazor WebAssembly. The client ID, yeah. So the client ID, if we go here, this is our client ID. So what we need to do here in this page is app, uh, add client application and I will paste this thing and we make sure it access authorized scope to the this scope. Voila. Can we add more permission here? Cool, so now we have it, it's done. So enter the, uh, yep, we did that. Note the URL scope, okay. My function app is name, okay. So now it's a good time to pause. What did we do? We create an app registration. So see, this is what we did since the beginning of this stream. So we create an app registration for the Blazor with assembly to Azure Active Directory. We generate the necessary code to authenticate the Blazor to Azure Active Directory. So that was done in the to delete application. But it's the same for our app. We created an app registration to secure the Azure function with Active Directory. We enable the support for the token. We ensure the user impersonation scope was available. We authorize the Blazor WebAssembly to secure access to the Azure Function app using blah, blah, blah. Cool. We're not done, quite done yet. Even though the Function app is configured to grant permission the, to the blah, 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 the Blazor app must explicitly ask for the permission. This is the last step to close the loop. In the Azure Function Directory app registration, navigate to your Blazor WebAssembly, so the middle tab for us tap the API permission and then go add the permission let's go with this so here I'm in the tiny I know app permission API permission and I'll add the permission API permission and then add permission yeah add a permission yeah and choose my API and select the Azure function app registration. Okay, so let's do this. Oh yeah, and here I think that's when I struggle because if I go, like he said, in my apps, I don't see anything. Could it be that the problem? See, if I go in app registration, I own this application, but all application, like this one is here, why I'm not the owner? Maybe I should create one and assign to it and then it will it will show up okay so in the so this is this tiny function, so now I need to admin. But I know if I go API in my organization, I will find it right here, it should be there. Yes, it's there. 
I think you're confusing app and API permission. I'm just following because here it say go in my APIs. In my APIs, I add nothing. But in my APIs of my organization use, there's one. So I'm just maybe that's why. That's why I like there's something that was working that is not working when I did like when I did for testing in a simple environment it was working now I'm trying to do it in my the context of my application and something is not working but like it it's so close so I thought maybe that's why last time I create the app and then I say to the function use this app and that's why if I do this I know it will show up in the my app but i don't know the difference between the my app and the app that my organization use i think it's just a question of owner ownership but like, owners add owner If I do that now here will it show yeah now it's showing let's try that so I need to click this and make this let's read it because I don't want to forget anything so choose my apps so now it's there is your Azure is a subscription part of your organization tenant or your tenant it's supposed to be my subscription. Is your Azure, is your Azure is subscription, bleh, is your Azure subscription part of your organization tenant? No, it should be mine. I should be the, the owner of that one. That's my uh, MSDN subscription. It's not part of the uh, like other stuff. It's mine. I should be able to do whatever I want with it. Um, except, you know, what's illegal, of course. It, there's only my, my users in it. There's no other Microsoft people inside this subscription. Uh, choose my app, select the Azure function restriction, tap delegate permission, so that we just did that, right? Delegate permission, uh, and make sure the user percent is checked in. Add permission to apply the save. Cool, let's do that. Apply permission. Grant admin consent forever. Okay. Now the function app is locked down. The job is not done yet. If you try to access the Azure function, even after you're logged in, you will receive a 401. I don't think so, because it doesn't contain any authentication information. Must be configure. it will be just my users like I said like it's it's my subscription I'm the only one in it all right all right what's happening new following thank you as it has he wrote 86 let's keep track of that New follower, boom. 
Welcome to the stream, my friend. Okay. So. App registration. Where is it? App registration. What? App registration. Voila. Okay, so now I have two app. Okay. So now... I think we should check and then if it doesn't work there's something in the code maybe when I did some renaming that I screwed up so we'll test again and then we'll step by step follow the code that was done by uh, Jeremy just to make sure because it was working then I renamed a bunch of stuff to make sense in my context because I was not using Cosmo and things like that. So I renamed for the tiny to make sense of her in her, in her app. And maybe I renamed too strongly. And I, I was hoping it was not that, but it could be that. It's, it's probably that. So let's try again because now we should have everything set up in terms of configuration. So if I go here now, do again at F5. This is our application, so now I do login. There's an, er an error when you log in, and there's something like it's empty, so I don't understand this part. So now let's follow in the code what Jeremy was doing. So how can I make it a little bit easier to follow. Can I do something like that? And here it's control what to hide you. Control shift E view. Uh, I want to toggle this thing. Control shift E. Hi! Hey, who's that? Fragburn! Welcome, Fragburn. How are you? In a... Yeah, we, we can totally do that. Um, let's do that. So let's then F5. Oh, you think it was cached? Good call. Let's do that. In a private. Boom. Logged in. I will enter my stuff. So it still doesn't work. I've been there for a while, but just not. Yeah, that's fine. Nice to see you. So we're still having that strange things here. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Um, stop. So, control B. So, let's understand. Blah 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 blah. Okay, configure Blazor WebAssembly to use the token. So it's probably a renaming. I was a little bit too uh, aggressive on the renaming, and I renamed something I shouldn't have done. We'll we'll, we'll fix that. Nobody is playing today. Nobody's playing. I'm real. I'm looking forward to uh, our Friday stream with the JavaScript stuff. 
Um, I did a bunch of stuff. It will be fun. Okay, so in Blazor WebAssembly, the HTTP client is injected using the dependency injection. The default client is configured with the same URL as the client. So you can make the little path is entity, blah, 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 blah. This is configured in program. So let's open the program. And the var entity. I don't have that. I have client get JSON async. Oh, what? Where that thing is coming from? This is not. Oh, well here the builder service add transient HTTP client. Like it's fun, but at the same time it's not fun like this. I think I will. I prefer I prefer having full screen. I can squeeze you a little. Okay. So in program I have the HTTP client. Base address, new array builder. That's here, right? Dependency injection. Yes. The Azure function endpoint has a different base URL and it requires header, blah, blah, blah. Configure the client, I added the Microsoft extension HTTP. That provide the helper method for creating the HTTP factory. This allow the configuration to be requested by name. More, um, more in a minute. First, let's set up the authorization. So in the application, I built in an authorization message handler automatically pre-configure the request, blah, blah, blah. So it's for him, it was the Cosmo authorization message handler. For us in data is the AZ function authorization message handler. Does this make sense? authorization message handler so a thing I could check is uh, what version are we running it was the um, this one right yep so let's check the version this Extension should run the preview version. Uh, 
we have 3.1.5 he was running 5 and the last version is 5 preview 6 so yeah let's what I'm assuming here I will need also to update a few stuff unresolved restore So here I'm using 3.0 preview HTTP client which version it was using any other preview stuff the ASP.NET Core ASP.NET Core I don't do I need an ASP.NET Core component yes so those two for him are pri preview right yeah okay so let's look this version build and the other one was what was dev server so dev server is this version is this version yes of course restore what else what else did you have for us so preview preview we have the oh this is also preview you are all in preview Uh, this I'm not surprised though that's in preview and I'm not using the preview because we're like we're talking blazer and 80 here so it makes sense that it would be in preview let's let's upgrade that too oh no like that it was working with the uh, app identification.
HTTP client he was using preview, right? I am using now the WebAssembly though, I was using the real one. He's using preview. Should I go all preview? I feel like this thing it was working previously, so I could keep that one. So I have still six problem. The I configuration and the uh, function handler. Okay, let's go see in the blazer in the data in here <clears throat> endpoint section dot get value so that's token client Right. section was oh a secure service and for him is the token client so if I go in my URL secure service I think it's the same thing If I go in here and I do token client, right? It was token client, the class, huh? yeah, token client. So in token client, I have just the get JSON. Factory, yeah, client data of name of so he is using his peanut core component, and I'm not. Is it that the problem? Net HTTP, yes, shredding task common. Why do you need this thing? So it's the class define a private read only HTTP client. And then you have a pub public service that return a HTTP yes. I create client of name of blah blah blah. And then a task get async token. Oh. Yeah. Right? 
Was it the thing that was missing? In program? Get value. configuration section doesn't contain get value so it's my configuration working I had to like the first time you can authenticate it and then the second time if you have multiple user or account it makes you select but since it's the first time it's kind of strange a little bit you're right extension configuration it says it's not using it but it should async task main well I can change that but uh uh no class it's program and here I have okay so it's just namespace class static async task okay that's the same thing and now I have same thing create default argument so his app is okay my app is not working because it doesn't compile or something and then static string WebAssembly
the I configuration section doesn't the definition of get value. Here had another one. Uh, no, new. He doesn't even have it. Maybe I don't need it. Blazer HTTP client we have preview three, preview three, and then component web assembly f three dot oh yeah. Let's put the same. So we got for WebAssembly Preview 5 and Preview 6. Why this one is not highlighted? same right so let's do the same for this one too Package downgrade ASP.NET Core authorization. Three one five ASP.NET Core. Execute. What? Dot net clean? <laughs> oh, it was dot net clean. Oh yeah, clear is for the <laughs> the terminal. Frank. Dot net restore. And I cannot type restore either. Yeah, like that thing I always do, like I'm not sure if is it O-U or O, A-U or O. So now it's restored correctly, interesting. So 
that's why. So I don't need any more authorization because in the preview version, like this is covering that, maybe? Well, now everything is working. Can I F5 this? Spell building .net command. What? save let's reopen super fast but we don't know why so let's close that yeah I saw it's failing so maybe there's something wrong with my my version I need to uh, update the full version he's also using the uh, this as a preview Microsoft Azure Service App Authentication. He doesn't even have it, right? Newton stuff, Jason. Okay, so this one we have it. It's, it's good. This one. So we're using five, he's using three, but it was all the same. And for us, oh no, here, this one, HTTP client. We're using like him, but not the last one. So let's double check if this exists in our version. For 
HTTP extension. It was at five. We are at five. And for this. Okay, so. How that's going? Let's save that. Restore. Problem authorization and learn. Now we're back with the uh, get value. So there's something we didn't do. How oh, did he create a section section and data maybe share no. what's missing what's missing so if I do uh, .NET, does it compile? It should it, right? Yeah. The namespace Azure doesn't exist in Microsoft. Yeah, there's something wrong with the authorization. Massage and learn. Oh. Change authorization message and learn for AZ. Michael Azure AD project or trying to make sense of it I'm assuming it, like it might be just the version version hell maybe I should just pick whatever he was using I'm using exactly what he's using. So in here, or okay, we are using the same thing. So the WebAssembly thing, we're not using the same thing, so let's use the same thing. Yes. Yeah. 
both here with R all, 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 okay. And now for the extension. Oh, we had that thing. And I don't have it. Oh, did I forget that? That's the thing I forgot, so I was right, but uh, oh, damn, it's just I forgot one dependency. And here I should remove this and HTTP JSON. Let's use the same, same. I was missing one, so I did that all for nothing. Yes, I did redo my stuff and now at least the basic one we did like a pure new app and that one is able to connect. And right now this one doesn't, but I think it, it was some kind of somewhere when I rename stuff, the classes and things, maybe I did I was like not maybe. I was probably a little bit too much aggressive and I broke something. Okay, so now the restore at least works close this let's f5 that again so oh it failed right I saw some red yeah but it's running this let's reopen it let's do a dotnet clean and it's built. So let's do dot net run. In Azure? What? Microsoft. You know what I'm super tempted to do is the only thing that was missing in fact in my previous setting was this extension dependency ex uh, injection. So I think I will just put that like in a notepad or something and take just that one line that was missing and put it and get back to my previous version. I think I will do that. 
just you know right and that's the one I want The namespace Azure doesn't exist in namespace Microsoft. That's kind of freaking out. Are you missing? Why do you see that? Azure doesn't exist. There's no Azure here. Was 2.1 and 3 and that was that's what he's using right 2.1 and 3 dot net sender false oh I didn't have that thing what was that thing enable link store yeah what's that <coughs> oh data URL services oh it's in that class okay let's see so in this class line 7 of course it doesn't exist because we remove that thing Read the source. 404 response for login. Maybe we should try this time in the uh, incognito mode. Right away, like it's a problem. 206. No, oh, 206 is my tenant. Okay, let's continue. Also by a space. 
space. The application Tiny Demo asks for a scope user persona that doesn't exist on the resource. Contact the vendor. So, maybe because it should be asking for the in persona, but on the other one, like there's we create the authorization, so it means it doesn't ask for the good one. So, maybe we don't read the, the ID correctly or something like that so it's it's a misconfiguration somewhere okay so that's cool. So at least, like it's the same thing, but now that the basic app was working and everything, I think we, we made some kind of progress. Now I, I feel I start to discern where the problem is. I still don't know what it, what it is though. So let's... Not sure what how the best way to investigate that. It's probably when I rename stuff that I did a mistake. This file is good. Um, yes, it is in my GitHub. Like the the change we did today is not there, but I can push it. Um, Blazor admin, but you need a lot of configuration. But if you want to just read, so it will be in the branch here. So, my call that will be where the code is sitting. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So I think what I should do is, or maybe I already did it. I think it will be good if I'm downloading that code and I compare page to page kind of thing. Though it would be easier if I was on two screen for more um, space. What's the real estate? <laughs> What's the good word for that? Um, I think I already downloaded this stuff. Cosmo, let's. Yeah. in my renaming that I screwed up something, right? So, 
since we'll be comparing unfortunately I will reduce a little bit the size I know I'm the only one probably who usually complain about those things but so program program and we should have some type table of equivalents. For example, we established that token client is this for me. So let's put here, we'll do here something like Oh, Bonjour! Hi! Hey! Bald Bearder Builder, how are you? See? See what I did there? I upload English in my little brain this weekend. So now I can speak English and I can say Bald Bearder Builder without any issues. It's a thing. Don't watch Matrix. <laughs> like you don't. <laughs> Freaked out. Um, it is not very old. Uh, Jeremy did it very recently. And I can still ping him and ask him though. Hey Shirley Dev, how are you? May I stress test the and stuff? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, I should work. And uh, I, I fix my stuff. So now it's uh, I'm able to call back end, front end and stuff and it's working. And I can even write in a file. But that's for Friday stream. That's for Friday stream. Okay, so let's continue to compare. There is a bad reference. Okay, so this is this. We established that earlier. Let's just again do it. If we go in data and then it was token client. And if I go here, can I do F12? Voila. So HTTP client, HTTP client. I have the uh, this thing, he has this thing. And he's asking for a token. And I'm calling an Azure function. Could that be my problem? it's calling it automatically the get token acts async no that's in the in the task he's not calling that right now that shouldn't be a problem <coughs> nobody was playing today I surely have very uh, surprise super Oh, so you had delay now. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So now you can try the stats. You can try the drop, of course. And what else? I forgot all the functions already. I should implement a help or something like that. Uh, okay, so that's a thing. So let's go back in program. So then we have the 
customer authorization message handler and for us it's this thing so let's put that in our equivalence to this and then so builder service blah 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 service right so he's trying here to access and like that was the problem right where the AD was not working so he's trying to use so set up the a plus in persona for the access for the function so function endpoint was defined just here and it's from the configuration get section name this token client that's I think it's my problem here I have get section and I have this and in my config I have token client but that's not my name my name is this thing whoop Progress. <sighs> progress. The scope is not bad. Then. Progress. Progress. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Yay. <laughs> it's just kidding. <laughs> I need to finish this tool, the the tiny blazer. I think I will. I need to speed up. And my boss asked me to take vacation. He's asking me like every second day to take vacation. So I think I will take a few days off. I will fix that thing, and I will be able to make the build the the, the build bot the bot working. Well, it's working now, but and um, add some stuff. And I I think I think it could create a, a game. Like, you know, where you fall straight on the target if your name is Fragbird or something like that. But I'm sure it would be way less fun. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, the problem is I have too much vacation and uh, I will lose them. And like, of course, like he's a good boss. So he's just, it just won't, doesn't want me to lose my vacation. Uh, let's try in, um, in this. And this, could it be just a cookie thing? No. The provided request must include a scope as input parameter. The provided scope is invalid. Tiny admin MXY. Is it the name of our app, MXY? I forgot. Yeah, 
Yeah. MXY P. I'm missing a. You're right, you're right. Uh, did it stop? I think it did. So let's F5 this again. Again. Way! Yay! Oh man! Fantastic! Oh, fantastic! Ice cream for everybody! I miss a beep. I would like to swear. Oh, oh man. read the chat because I miss a lot of things manager are bugging oh yeah <laughs> Michael you need to take vacation let's work on some apps together um, uh, is there a check that you're all created poorly blah 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 I think you're missing so Michael thank you everything was working because of you yeah big clap for Michael the frustrated dev thank you sir um, since it's a prime oh damn well okay what is it okay so let's recap we had two issue issues the first one is here when we build the stuff to get our token and things like that. I was going here looking for the section with this section and I'm I'm going for the uh, in the configuration here, right? But in my app settings this was still name client token. That's why I didn't find anything because here it was like hey use the get section name of blah 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 so that was mistake one the second mistake is in the endpoint that last thing here was required so now we are authenticated so now we'll be able to call my function and it was failing because right now I don't check my authentication in my client so that makes sense oh my god so that's cool so um, so Michael I swear if that thing doesn't hit the target I'm going to Mars <laughs> did, did you land Michael I'm so late in the in the chat. Okay, what's the secret? There. What was the issue? Teamwork. Yeah, that's excellent. We don't see something. Oh. Yeah. 
again. So, first problem was here. So in the program section, here I'm reading the configuration and I'm getting the section with this, but it was still token client, uh, it was this, but then in app setting here, this section here was still client token, token client, whatever, the other class that Jeremy is using. And this last forward slash was missing. So that was the problem. So that was the two problem we had. Did anybody try the uh, stats? Exclamation point stats? Did it work? No. It didn't. Huh. Oh. Huh. Well, something's wrong. Score doesn't work either. Maybe the butt is not set up. I don't know, that's strange. That looks strange to me. To, uh, to run the app now it's not just a static website now I need to run the full service and everything that's the problem now I need to to run the service the service is not running so it's key <laughs> sorry but it didn't keep your score sorry well you know what I'm very happy today was a good day thank you for all of you being there watching me painfully resolving that issue next week we'll finally be able to add functionality in the tiny blazer admin or and move forward because we have so much stuff to add in it and uh yeah but friday come back because friday we're messing around with the butt and want to add more functionality make sure that you know sometime fragbirds you know, fall on the target and stuff like that. I have no control on that part. <laughs> but, you know, make fun with uh, the cloud bot will be better. So, uh, have a good week and I will see you again on Friday. But before we go, how many viewers are we? A uh, few viewers. Let's see who's streaming. Let's see who's streaming, who we can raid. Because raiding is fun. So, uh, oh, you know what? Let's go see Mr. Instafluff because it's been a while. It's been a while since I, I raid him. So, um, yeah, I will see you Friday. Have fun, enjoy, give some love to Instafluff. And with that, I say bye bye. -bye.